Hi, and welcome to another episode of Piano TV. So since we were talking about Haydn's backstory in a previous video, I thought it would be fitting for our next tutorial to be a Haydn piece. But instead of doing one of his easier grade one level pieces, I decided to take one of his symphonies, really famous, and rearrange it for piano, but for like beginners-ish. Now, it's not like if you're brand new to the piano, this is going to be a little out of your reach. I would think that you'd want to be playing for at least a year before attempting this one, but you know, it depends on how fast you learn. So we're going to discuss the backstory of this symphony. I'm going to play a little clip so you can hear what it sounds like, and we'll take a look at the piano parts and pick it apart and figure out all the details and stuff. So let's get started. <laughs> All right, so backstory time. This was Haydn's 45th symphony. It was written in F sharp minor and it was nicknamed the Farewell Symphony. It was also written in 1772 when Haydn was roughly 40 years old. So I wanna tell you about the story of this symphony because it's awesome. So Haydn was the musical director for the Esterhazy family and the Prince Nicholas, he liked to shuttle all the musicians out to the Esterhazy summer home. So the summer home was about a day's journey from where all the musicians lived and their stay had been extended and everyone was getting kind of homesick and, you know, just restless. So the musicians went up to Haydn and were like, Haydn, we miss our wives. Can you talk to the prince so we can actually like go home finally? And Haydn, being Haydn, decided to put this request into music instead of, you know, talking to the prince directly. So he wrote this symphony, the Farewell Symphony. He performed it through with all the musicians, he played the violin, and then at the very end, all of the musicians left the room one by one while snuffing out their candles because it was nighttime until it was just Haydn and another guy left. And happily, the Prince Nicholas took the hints and they all got to go home. So a note needs to be made about the key signature, which is F sharp minor. On piano, it's, it's a mildly annoying key signature with three sharps, but back in the 1700s, there was not a single other symphony that used this key since it was just kind of awkward for a lot of instruments. So what apparently, what Haydn apparently did was ordered some half step slides for the horn players, which allowed them to play a half step lower, which allowed for him to write a song with this unusual key signature. So let's take a listen to a few moments of the original symphony, and then we'll jump right into the piano version. <laughs> to note is this sheet music spans only about the first minute of the entire symphony but it's long enough to get a feel for the main theme which is the part that most people are familiar with anyway so you'll notice at the beginning there's some staccatos and then we have this word simile which is italian for just similar so basically what this means is the person who wrote the sheet music <clears throat> me um, was lazy and didn't want to do a staccato for literally every single quarter note so you just assume that throughout the whole piece you're going to have this quarter note staccato situation our tempo marking at the beginning is allegro assai, and all that means is, well, we know what allegro means, and that's to play fast. So when you add assai in front of it, it means very, so we're going to play this at a very fast pace. Okay, so I was a little bit rude when I was writing this piece. So there's constant chords happening in the left hand, but I didn't actually go up and label what those chords actually are. So the reason I did this is if you were a student in my studio, I would make you manually figure out the chords one by one just for practice to get more comfortable identifying them quickly. So I highly recommend you do that, especially if you print out the sheet music and then you can just doodle the chord symbols up top. Really, really good music theory practice. But just to get you started, let's go through the first three together, all right? So our first chord, we have the notes C sharp, F sharp, remember the key signature is making those sharp, and A. So in order to figure out what chord this is, we have to rearrange this so that they're in thirds. Okay, so I'm gonna take the C sharp from the bottom, move it to the top, and then you can kind of see we have this thirds set up here. There's a G that could go in between F and A, and there's a B 
that could go between A and C. So that's how you know your chord is in root position. Now I know that this is an F sharp minor chord. And if you played it on the piano, you could probably hear that dark minor sound. All right, so let's rearrange the second chord here. So we have D sharp, F sharp, B. And again, we have to reposition those. So I'm gonna put B on the bottom, D sharp. So there's a third, B, C, D, and then F sharp again, a third. So, oh, sorry, there's no D sharp. What am I doing? So B, D, F sharp, that would be a B minor chord. So I would just label it here. And then the last chord I wanna look at, I just wanna look at because it's kind of a little bit wacky. All right, so quickly rearranging these notes in root position, we have G sharp, B, and D. So this isn't a typical major or minor chord. So G major would be just G, B, D, and G minor would be G, B flat, D. So what this, ha what this is, is a G sharp, because that's our first note, it has to be G sharp something. It's a G sharp diminished chord, because if you were to raise this to a D sharp, it would be minor, but that D is lowered, to just like a regular D and that makes it diminished, which is that very like evil stormy sounding chord. So let's take a look at the most difficult aspect of the song, at least in my opinion, these long lengthy note spanning arpeggios in the right hand. And then there's also a part in where the left hand kind of has to do some jumping around too. So wide leaps are always a little bit challenging to just make sure you're hitting the right notes. So I think one of the best things you can do when you have these wide leaps is to see if you can find patterns in them. So it's not just like, you know, six completely random notes. So if we, we take a look at what the notes are, we have F sharp, we have C sharp and A. So that's all well and good, but let's take a look at the next three notes. We have F sharp, C sharp, A. So that makes it easier to remember. Same three notes here as there are here. The only difference is they're an octave lower. And aside from this one B at the top here, you'll notice an alternating pattern G, C, G, C, G. Okay, so if you can kind of find little patterns like that, it makes it easier to internalize and then you can cover the leaps a little bit easier. On the second line, there's this difficult hands together section with wide leaps. So what I find useful is to break each one of these bars down into a chord. For example, you can kind of see this is a G major chord over here. You can kind of see it's building an F sharp minor chord and so on. And that'll just, again, make it easier to internalize it. I'm always a big fan of simplifying things. So you'll need to spend some extra time working on the right hand notes, but sometimes playing like just the right hand only can get a little bit boring. So what I like to do is kind of like a like intermediate step. So instead of playing the full chords in the left hand, like that, just playing a single note instead. So if the chord is an F sharp minor chord, like the first one, I would just play an F sharp note in the left hand like this. And that just makes it a little bit easier to play, but it's still a little bit more interesting than just playing the right hand. So as a middle step, I might do something like this. One more note about this piece is that your fingers are gonna be doing some overlapping while you play. It's not a super uncommon thing to come across in piano, so I figured I'd just show you how to do it. So what I mean by overlapping is that the right hand notes, will sometimes be the exact same notes that the left, left hand happens to be playing. So in that first arpeggio, when the right hand goes, the A overlaps the right hand and the left hand. So what I just did there is I just moved my left hand thumb out of the way. I'll do that in slow motion so you can watch that. All right, so right at the moment the right hand was about to hit that note, my thumb just kind of made way for the right hand. So in all the spots where this overlap happens, and there are a few places in the entire song, just do a little thumb maneuver to get your left hand out of the way. And that is all for today's tutorial. So if you want to learn how to play this on the piano, I always leave the sheet music linked below. You can just check in the description bar and it'll take you a link to the pianotv.net website. Then you can print it off and have a party. Thank you for watching this video. Send and did a like if you enjoyed it and I will catch you guys next time. Buzz, buzz.